بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف First, I offer my condolences to Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif and all of you for the great suffering and pain which has been caused to the hearts of Mu'mineen because of the strike of Ibn Muljam and Amir al Mu'mineen. We said that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says murder is such a great crime and actually this is mentioned right after the story of Habil and Qabil that he has written down he has made this a firm legislation to Bani Israel that whoever kills a person man qatala nafsan bi ghayr nafsan aw fasad fi al ard fa ka'anna ma qatala an nas jami'a if without that person being a murderer or being a mischief maker then basically someone who doesn't deserve execution as a just punishment if someone kills such a person is like killing all people all mankind killing one person and of course you can imagine if someone kills amir al mu'minin then what would be the crime who is imam al nas if one member Ordinary member, even a child is killed, is like killing old people. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا And if someone managed to revive a person, means to save, to give life, physical life, but also a spiritual life, guidance to someone, is like saving all human beings. Allah min rahmatullah alayhi in al-mizan says human beings all share one reality and that's humanity if someone kills one person without crime without that person being a murderer or mischief maker he is indeed undermining the shared humanity which is in that person but also in other human beings he's saying i don't pay attention i don't you know value humanity if he was valuing humanity he would not have killed any human being so killing one person is not just killing one person is killing one person because of lacking respect for humanity it's like for example if someone says i kill you because you are a muslim or because you are a shia it's not then just killing you it means that in my view muslims or shia have no value so he is declaring war and enmity to all Muslims or all the Shia. Once I had an issue with, uh, uh, you know, visa for one country. And then one of my friends, you know, said, you know, don't or don't take it personal it's not because of you it's because of for example your nationality i said 
this actually makes me feel bad and worse because if it was just me, I could say, okay, they have problem just with me. <laughs> but you see, they have problem with all my, you know, uh, fellow, uh, you know, nationals. Then that makes me even worse. So if someone says, you know, don't worry, I am bad with you because you are a Muslim, you don't feel, you know, better. You feel that, oh, you are, you know, bad with all Muslims. So, killing one innocent person is declaring war to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to all human beings. In Al-Kafi and Ma'an al-Akhbar, Kafi for Shaykh Kulayni, Ma'an al-Akhbar for Shaykh al-Saduq. In both of them, we have a hadith from Imam Baqir alayhi salam. <laughs> Someone asked Imam about this ayah. Imam Baqir alayhi salam, according to this hadith, said, this person would be put in a place in hell where azab, where punishment would reach its peak, a murderer. And if he kills more people, still he would be in the same place. Then the person says, if he, asks, he kills another person, Imam says, the place is the same, just the intensity of azab will increase. Like imagine, for example, if there is a certain prison for murderers, all murderers are here. But maybe one is supposed to be there for 20 years, one for 40 years, or one, you know, has to also do some, you know, hard work. They may have different plans for each of them, but basically murderers are all together. So in hell, there is a place which is very, very low and that is for murderers. As I explained yesterday, so it means that increase in the number of murders just makes it worse in quantity, but there is no quality worse than this. You cannot do any crime worse than killing people. This is Islam. And then how sad it is that someone who called themselves Muslims and then in the months of Ramadan they go and attack a school and kill children. Who has ever said that any child can be killed? Even you cannot kill child of Hitler. If the Hitler had a child, is Saddam Hussein, Yazid had a child. Child is innocent, child has no issue. Even if parents are guilty of greatest you know, crimes, child is innocent. In the name of Islam, in the months of Ramadan, to attack and kill innocent you know, children in Afghanistan and Kabul. So this is how much jahiliya, how much ignorance is at work that you can take something 180 degree to the opposite. This book which attaches so much value to every life, you quote few verses, verses of the Quran and justify killing innocent people and then you think you are going to be treated by Allah as a hero. Is this something a hero do, does? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمَ مَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا جَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا If someone kills a believer, mutaammidan, sometimes there's accident, for example, of course you have to be careful, but sometimes even when we are very careful, all of a sudden someone you know, comes in front of your car, maybe there's accident. But mutaammidan, deliberately, then the punishment is to be in hell forever. Khalidan fiha. 
One of the beautiful things that the Quran talks about murder is that murder not only, it's very logical, not only demonstrate your lack of respect for humanity, but also it means that you are losing in yourself. I will explain how, but first let me explain the verses and then I will say what is the point. For example, about Habil and Qabil, when Qabil killed Habil, Allah says, فَتَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ his nafs, his nafs ammare, the soul which is commanding to do bad things, the soul when it is not trained and purified, is ammara basu. Inna nafs la ammara basu. So his soul made it look nice for him to kill his brother. A brother killing brother? How is it possible? This is the temptation of nafs when you listen to your nafs and then says فَأَسْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Qabil by killing his brother becomes one of the losers Habil didn't lose he's mazloom, he's martyr but the murderer is khasir, khisara is loss. What is khisara in Arabic? In Arabic we have two terms which are similar but they have some difference. Zarar means harm. Zarar. Yeah? Khisara means loss. What's the difference between harm and loss? They say, imagine a person that in very hot summer is selling ice. Okay? Sun is shining and the ice is melting. If he doesn't manage to sell this ice quickly, then not only he is not going to make profit, he is going to lose his capital. This is Khesara. Khisara is that not only you don't make profit, you are losing your capital. If it was just winter and the ice was not melting, okay, so you know, I don't make profit today, I sell it tomorrow. When Allah says, Innal insan lafi khus, means we are like ice melting. Let's do something before we are completely <laughs> melt. We have to do something. Now, Qabil is Khasir, is a loser, but what he has lost, Quran explains itself in another place. Inna al khasirin al khasiru anfusa. The real losers are those who lose themselves. When we lose humanity which is in us, we are khasir. You kill one person, so you harm him. You deprive him from life and from progressing. But you are killing also humanity in yourself. You are making yourself void of humanity. Maybe that person Allah would, you know, somehow compensate him with what he's losing. But you are not going to be compensated because you are a criminal. So, Asbaha Qabil means Qabil, Huwa means Qabil. Asbaha min al khasiri. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those people who used to kill their children. One of the uh, superstitious ideas and practices they had in the time of Jahiliyyah was to kill their children. 
They used to kill their daughters because they didn't have mercy and love. They used to also sometimes kill their children out of fear of poverty. That, you know, I don't have money to afford. I cannot look after this child. Allah says, قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَتَلُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ Those who killed their children, they lost. What does it mean they lost? It doesn't mean they lost their children, it's obvious. It means they have lost in themselves. They have lost humanity in them. They have lost all the values and virtues in them. So a murderer, before managing to harm someone, is harming himself and is taking away the most precious gift that he has and that is humanity that Allah has given us that divine spirit in us you are losing that in Kanzul Umal there is a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said In a normal natural condition a human heart understands what is right what is wrong Quran says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah has inspired the human soul to understand. This is part of humanity. This is part of the beauty of human creation that they can understand what is right, what is wrong. So, when you are in natural, fitri condition, your heart understands what is ugly what is not ugly in actions but when someone commits a theft according to this hadith in kanzul omar rasulullah says the heart becomes mankus becomes upside down then this person would not understand the ugliness of murder so first you know it is ugly and do it, unfortunately. Then you don't understand. And then you may do it much more. First there is some resistance. The first time they have to push themselves because as a human being, they don't want to do such a you know, cruel act. So they have to push themselves. But little by little, they don't need to push themselves. And sometimes people, you know, if they don't kill people, they don't, you know, feel that this was a good day. This is humanity. Now, what are the main elements in life? We have Allah's life. We said Allah is al Hay. We have life for angels. Angels have life. We have life for human beings. We have life in the hereafter. We have life in animals. We have life in plants. What is common between them? What is the core of life? Life is a matter of three things. If these three things are there, then there is life. If these three things are stronger, then the life is stronger. If these three things are weaker, then life is weaker. If there is no, you know, these three things, then there is no life. One is knowledge. Life involves knowledge. A living being is aware of itself and what is happening around. But you have a range, understanding of a plant of environment up to understanding of an animal of the environment or a human being, 
or angels or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are different degrees of knowledge, but there is no life without knowledge. And this has lots of implications. You know, in our hadith, it says, Al ilmu hayatu. Elm is life. So if we don't learn, if we don't increase our knowledge, it means that we are satisfied with lower degrees of life. We are not operating as we can. The other element in life is power. Ability to bring changes. A dead cannot do anything. Neither is aware nor has power to do anything. Those who have life are powerful, are able to bring changes. And the third is will, erata. Will is very, very important. The more you exercise your willpower, the more you experience life. If I have no knowledge or no power or no determination, I am close to death. Some of us, sometimes we are so lazy, so passive. We don't have any plan, any decision. This is a kind of death. Quran talks about people in hell. It says, ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا What does it mean? Is this a contradiction? It says, He's not dying and he's not alive. What is this? He's not dying and he's not alive. He is not dying so that he says, okay, Alhamdulillah, it's going to finish. Yeah, sometimes you wish to die. Quran says, people who are in hell, they say to the patron of hell, Na daw ya Malik. Malik is the patron of hell. Uh, help. لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ May your Lord terminate us, finish us. لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ They want to die, they want to be finished. But he says, قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَا كَثُونَ You have to stay. So, لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا He is not dying. But Wala Yahya, he is not also alive. What does it mean? He is not dying so that understanding of pain stops. He is not alive because he cannot protect himself and bring any good to himself. So he has some elements of life and lacks some other elements of life. So he's in a position like a limbo. So, if I don't actively try to improve my condition or condition of other people, it's a kind of death. We have to be active, we have to be determined. Determination is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the a strongest willpower to the extent that إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُمْ When he wills something, he says, be, there it is. And even when we say he says be, we don't mean that he says be, you know, verbally. It means that Allah just in his will address that thing, saying, means it is there. Like we said in Rabat Ibrahim that 
Call, uh, by calling them, you are creating them, giving them life. Allah has a strongest will. Then those who are closer to him. People of heaven, they have such a will power that whatever they want will be there for them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all hujaj of Allah, all awliya Allah who have vilayat takwini, who have generative guardianship, Allah gives them permission to will and then it happens. Mu'jaza is not that they pray to Allah or ask Allah, please, you know, show them something. According to Allah, Mu'jaza means that Allah through their soul shows Mu'jaza, shows miracle. Allah uses them. We think a stick in the hand of Musa was very important because it became a dragon. But no, the hand of Musa which holds this stick is important. If I hold it, nothing happens. Musa has to hold this. So this is their power. Therefore, out of 124,000 prophets, how many Rasul we have? 330, yeah? 124,000 Nabi, but only 313 Rasul who had message from Allah. Other prophets, they were communicating message given to the messengers. Out of 313, five are selected. These are select of the select. All the prophets are selected. Among them, 313 are selected. Among them, five are selected. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What we call them? Ulul As. They have many good qualities. But we call them people of determination. Knowledge is important, wisdom is important. They have many, well, generosity is very important. But if you don't have real power, how are you going to use these things? It is real power of Rasulullah that he says, if they put sun in one hand of mine, moon in another, I'm not going to compromise. They killed the Muslims, they tortured them, they confiscated their properties. They put them for three years in Sheikh Abi Talib. Did Rasulullah show any weakness? The man who is so soft hearted, so loving, so merciful, that even cannot see one child, one animal, one, I don't know, insect suffering, but his willpower. <laughs> is of another realm and having these together is very important to have kind and caring heart but at the same time be very firm now the hadith says that moments are like water and i say beauty of water is this water is very soft and goes to any container and takes the form of the container yeah it's very gentle very soft if we want to put metal or wood they resist if you want to put them in a container and they are bigger they say you know i don't want to go into that kind of what they do they, they cut them they break them they cut, make them into pieces and put them water says you know i am soft i take the form but i don't lose anything 
if you are nice with me, I am nice with you. But if you want to challenge me, it becomes like a stone. If in a swimming pool, if you, you know, dive and you don't know how, water can kill you. <laughs> because then it becomes like a stone. So, moment is gentle, but also strong. These two are very important. Gentle and strong. Not gentle and weak. And not harsh. A strength is different from harshness. Some people think a strength means to be harsh. No one can talk to me. No one dares, you know, uh, looking at me. Everyone is afraid of me. This is not a strength. This means that you are a weak person. You have some problem. You cannot be with people. You are afraid of people. Or you are hiding your fear in this harshness. Be soft like Rasulullah, sitting with people. Be just one of them. But be a strong. How you show your strengths? When your values are compromised. Show your strengths. When your dignity, your dignity of your people is compromised. Not that you know when you know your convenience is compromised, you become angry. When your food is late, you know you become angry. So out of 313 messengers, we call five of them. Ulul Asb. Allah says to the Prophet, Fasbir kama sabara ulul azm min al rusul. So, life has three elements knowledge, power, and will. The stronger you have these, the greater experience of life you have. The lesser of these three, the lesser experience of life you have. Inshallah, we continue this discussion in Allah tomorrow. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this <coughs> sacred moment of months of Ramadan approaching Maghreb of the first night of Qadr to allow us to transform ourselves, to change ourselves to what he wants from us. Amen. We say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are what we want. Please make us what you want. We are very honored to be your servant. But please help us to meet your expectations. We ask Allah to forgive all our sins and mistakes and shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his mercy his Rahmah, His Maghfara to all Mu'mineen and Mu'minat who have passed away, especially those who have rights upon us. We should remember our parents, our four parents, all our ancestors, we should pray for them, we should remember them, we should be grateful to them, our teachers, our ulama, the martyrs, everyone who has in any way helped us to be what we are today, if anything good we have, we have received from them. May Allah be most generous and most forgiving to them. O oh Allah, please give shifa to all people who are ill. Amen. Especially, please give shifa to people who have very difficult types of illnesses. Amen. Please protect for us our maraja, our ulama, our teachers our elderly members of community and families, our volunteers. Please strengthen our families. Please unite our community all over the world. Please enable us to be good examples of believers, good examples of human beings for all people of the world. And please make us in this night of Qadr pleasing to Imam of our time. Please enable us to connect our hearts to his heart when he receives the angels and the spirit in the night of Qadr. Amen. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen.